All right, so here we have a 30 years skirmish in Pike and Shot. Um, I'm just starting recording of game, so I missed the army selection screen, but we got to deployment. So it's Swedish 1630 versus German Catholic 1632. Um, so it's the Swedish army of the Gustavus Adolphus era uh, versus the German Catholics of the same era. Um, extending into the later era, so the Catholics will be using um, the same sort of thinner pike and shot formations that we'll be using. Um, this matchup overall, I think the Germans have the advantage. Now, I'm not just saying that because I'm playing the Swedes, we'll be playing a mirror match. Uh, it's just that the Swedish army is expensive, uh, particularly this veteran Swedish salvo foot. They are 83 points a pop, whereas your standard average pike and shot unit is 42 points. Um, now, you get a lot for that 83 points. It's 600 men, so they don't suffer from losses easily. Uh, they're salvo foot, so you can crush enemy infantry and impact. Uh, they get light guns for more firepower up close to make up for the salvo's deficiency in close range firepower. And they get armor, which helps them in the melee and helps them a little bit against long-range musketry. But 83 points is just a lot, and I think that the uh, post-30 years war later Swedish salvo foot, which is just average mixed foot with no armor and no light guns, is a much better buy, because you can get more of them. But we'll see. I do have some nice terrain here, although there's a large stream by bisecting the field. So if my opponent lines the stream, uh, we might end up drawing out, but we'll see. I'll try to get some guns on this ledge and looks like it would be unwise to deploy my cavalry on the left. So it looks like we'll have to try a cavalry push on the right. The train is pretty bad either way. guessing that a straight up move down the center will not be my opponent's play. So we'll put our standard pike and shot units in the center. Um, we'll put some pike and shot with light guns on the left. And then we will intersperse our salvo foot and light gun pike and shot on the right. Uh, in terms of cavalry, we mostly have a standard horse. Okay, that's not my deployment. Sometimes I just sort them out like that to figure out what's going on. Uh, these commanders shot with light guns are all right. Um, you know, it's 150 men, which isn't much, but they also get light guns, so they're better than the standard commanded shot. But honestly, I would not have bothered purchasing these guys. They're 33 points at the same cost. Well, it's three points more than the cost of a raw pike and shot unit. But they're required, so I brought them along and see what we can do with them. Uh, I believe I'll keep them deployed on the right here to help a cavalry push, if that's even possible. Um, we'll put all our tankier horse on this right side. Veteran horse. Uh, Crossiers are basically the same as veteran horse, except that they're more heavily armored, which is good, but they're not determined horse, they're horse, which is bad. That means that enemy cavalry that loses an engagement to them can fall back from the engagement. Um, then we have the Hakapels. Um, these guys are really good. They're elite and they're impact mounted. Um, so against superior uh, pistol impact cavalry, it doesn't make a huge difference. But against any other cavalry, these guys can just crash into them and sweep them out of the way. Uh, they are expensive, and they are less well armored than their companions. So if they fail to disrupt the enemy in impact, uh, they're going to have a tougher time. I need to decide how many horsemen to keep on this left side to hold off any probing by... My opponent's horseman or his skirmishers, I think we'll keep three there, dump another horse unit here, and then 
keep two more in reserve and they'll go whatever direction is required. All right, that's first turn. Okay, now for my Swedes. The cavalry situation is not great. The salvo foot's gonna have to avoid this rough ground. It slows our movement to uh, one tile and it slightly disorders them. It's not the end of the world, but you know, these guys should be used charging into infantry on open ground. Uh, I do appreciate my opponent, Awesome Four, here. Great guy, good player. Also, a gentleman, as we can see from his crossing over the large stream to come at me. Um, unless he is just sitting in the stream, that would be rather odd, so I don't think he'll do that. Um, the very like defensive, maybe like tournament style play would have been to kind of chill on this side of the stream and dare me to get mowed down trying to cross. So instead, we'll slug it out and be open and see who comes out on top. Uh, one of those very minor tricks in this game and in the other games, of course, is to move here first, then here face all the way instead of the two tiles. It's a little iffy. It's a lot of veterans. We do have Hakapels. Now, commanded shot plus light guns don't offer a ton of firepower but um, they can zone of control lock cavalry. Okay, so we'll move forward one here, see if he moves a bit closer, and then we'll rush forward. If these veteran horse arc around, we'll uh, have a bit of trouble. Uh, if he does that, we'll want to either... Standing him off with his, with this infantry would be fine, but I really need the infantry to shoot at his infantry. So I would try to stand off against his horse either on this hill or ideally on this rough ground on this hill. So, you know, the veterans would probably still eventually overcome the horse, but with both units disordered, it would be a slow process. And the whole point would just be to be buying the infantry line time for the salvo foot to batter through, hopefully. So, onward. Okay. Mm, held firm. I am being indecisive now, but I'm going to turn these back around. Maybe a bit foolish.
Now the question is, do I want to move this line up this turn or wait one more turn? I think I will wait. Okay. The next two turns will decide the whole affair. it disrupted so easily. That alone could cost me the battle. Now I have to decide whether to hold them back to get shot at, to fall back and waste their 83 points doing nothing until they rally, or to charge forward while it disrupted, risking getting fragmented by fire or bouncing off when charging. It's all rather bad. Horse are pretty evenly matched, at least until this next unit arrives. I was hoping to draw fire with that, but no luck. This rough ground is a little unfortunate. If it was open, I might have a chance to more quickly move my regular horse around his flanks, but as it is, it looks like we might need to engage in a pretty graceless head-on impact. So, I can either move some of these units forward to draw fire before closing the salvo foot, or keep shooting. See if we can stand their fire before contact. And next turn. Shh. 
bad. It's also unfortunate. Well, I wish I had the same level of disruption as in our mirror match. Hoping for a rally on my foot, but it was not meant to be. That will help a little. run into a slight problem here. I don't know if commanded shot actually exert a zone of control without, well, I feel like this must be adjacent. We will take the chance. I mean, I suppose I could pause recording and look at the manual and all that, but instead we'll just take the chance. So what do you got? Troop quality in salvo is 250, as opposed to troop quality in attached guns for 50. The attached guns being defensive impact only. They held firm. Could try to disrupt this unit by fire, but I think we'll just go in. Look. That is rather bad. It's all rather bad. Uh, three to two. Not a winning proposition. So this flank is threatened now. I suppose we must make these hard decisions first. Okay. So, impact doesn't take armor into account. Uh, melee does. We luck out on the impact, but they held firm. So in this case, um, impact mounted negate uh, pistol impact unless it is in superior quality, which they are. So all I get is a 25 impact for elite quality, unfortunately. But it's no time to mess around. We gotta throw them in. So he did a good job matching these up. I don't like turning away from his infantry, but I also, if I move forward, I just open myself up here. 
maybe if I cover myself in that way, then he could still lock me in and flank me anyway. Okay, we don't have much choice. Next turn. And next turn. That is unfortunate. Oh, you know, he might have been zone of control locked. The rules in Pike and Shot are a little bit different from in Field of Glory. So unit facing within 45 degrees to your direct front uh, locks you. Alright, so once again that fallback was only possible because the Krasi is our horse as opposed to determined horse. I was hoping to catch them, but no such luck. Okay, my opponent is thoroughly outplaying me in this pair of games so far, I would say. Um, we'll see if recovery is possible, but it's looking a little bit grim. Next turn. Fortunate. Ouch. Bad luck. Uh, I think it's all over soon. Oh. No, <laughs> such a disaster.
surprised they held on there. Risk a break. No break. Okay. Good. Let's see if we can pursue into this frag unit. Maybe. This is all gonna explode in my face, too. Uh, I have wasted this unit. I suppose all I can do is sit him here when these pikemen pursue. I can at least hit them in the rear and neutralize them. It's not much. Oof, ouch. All right, onward. All right, next turn. Looks like Awesome 4 thinks I'm winning now. That sounds nice. Have my doubts. As I've said elsewhere, I always feel like I'm losing, basically, in a relatively even match until the moment that I win. So maybe this is one of those. Yes, am I winning? It doesn't... Maybe he has similar feelings, because this is looking like a roll up here. That is helpful, certainly. Oh good, they're running this way. Hopefully they'll keep following me for a while. Uh, but I can't count on it. Oh, maybe I am winning. What a disappointment they were. Okay. We're going to have to try to rush to intercept his cavalry. Right, so even though we're slightly disordered because a third of our unit is heavy foot, we can only move one tile. I don't think these horses are going to arrive in time at this rate. I was going to stick these pike and shot in rough for cover from the horse, but then I realized the dragoons could then charge me. Uh, these are non lights and these are lights, so I'm probably better off standing in the open and then getting. 
being shot to pieces instead. Okay, so let's see, overall situation. This is a wash on this wing. Um, I held on long enough that these horsemen will probably not be able to intervene. Um, perhaps my opponent would have been better off holding this stream, although in that case, the battle probably would have involved a mass cavalry assault in this direction, followed by infantry support. Uh, it might have drawn out, to be honest, as we just both stared at each other and shot cannons. Uh, this has certainly been thrilling, and it's not over yet, but I think that Awesome Four is correct, and I'm about to break his infantry center. Let's see if that's true, though. Next turn. He says I'm winning this one, but, uh... Oh! I guess I was mistaken about that. Interesting. I guess I play all three of these games and start getting mixed up about the differences sometimes. Or perhaps rules that they cannot charge steady foot? I'll have to look that up. But yes, perhaps Awesome 4 shares my feeling of always feeling like you're losing, because he's up 13% now. Ignore these guns and push for the infantry. If this unit can just hold out a little longer, we can get the flank. The only reason it's not worse is a combat strength modifier, uh, which is basically the number of men left in the unit is pretty strongly in our favor at 400 to 300. I do hesitate to simply turn around and fire as if this unit collapses, uh, it would, they would get hit in the rear. So we'll shuffle here and turn this unit around to fire. And I'm still concerned actually, uh, this unit will auto break at about 237 men, um, which is, could be just a few volleys from the Dragoons, so we might need to get them help. I was going to use this cavalry to fight his cavalry, but instead we're going to use it to zone of control this unit, just in case this frag unit holds out. Um, and after that we'll have to turn back around or possibly get sandwiched and broken, but the key is to win the infantry battle. If we win the infantry battle, we have infantry left, and he only has cavalry left, and I have just a little bit of cavalry support then I've won the battle, because uh, cavalry really can't touch steady infantry in this game without infantry support. Okay, onward. Next turn.
Thanks. <laughs> it's all pretty hideous, but it looks like he's right and we appear to be winning. Huh. You know, I kind of, I don't remember if it was in this, this video or not, but in one, one of these recordings, I kind of made fun of uh, Richard York, who records a lot of Field of Glory 2 videos, and he often says, you know, good rally, when something rallies. And I was making fun of him, saying, you know, like, Richard, what isn't a good rally? It's always good. Well, now I have, I have to be fair to Richard and say this was not a good rally. This was a bad rally. These guys are going to get charged and broken immediately. It would have been far better had they waited until they were over here or something. So I, t I take back my earlier words and will admit this is a bad rally. Um, I'm going to just flee just to avoid cohesion testing when these guys break, which is now. Um, right. Just gonna have to accept some cannon fire to the back. Uh, the game does check to see if you're within immediate charge range, so you can turn to guard your flank despite the zone of control locked. Um, yeah, you, you're doomed. There's a very small chance that this unit, despite being an only average unit that is fragmented and is at almost 50% strength, will pass its cohesion check. And if it does, then the enemy cavalry will be moderately disordered in the rough. It's not likely to happen, but it's sort of small detail that if you just pay attention to this sort of thing, it can add up. Um, you know, I feel like these guys should just like shake hands and call it a day. You know, nobody needs to die here. No one's paying attention to what they're doing. Um, but I guess the struggle will go on. So, till the next turn. Next turn. Oh no. No thank you. Oh, they did hold. Dead heat of forty one to forty one. Yeah, well, didn't matter in the end, but try it. Okay, well, these guys are doomed, but they won, so kind of evens out, I suppose. Um, right, so you can see here, salvo at short range, 88 effective shots, um, as opposed to, for example, 
uh, pike and shot, 143 effective shots. The salvo has 430 men. This pike and shot unit has 280. So salvos reserve a lot of their fire for the uh, close-up charge, where all the musketeers fire at once and the whole unit charges with a pike sword and musket butt. Which is nice and all, but less good for close range firefights. So not just because the unit is good at charging, but also because it is bad at close range shooting. You really gotta just get them in there. Trying to decide if it would be wise to even attempt to pursue this unit, it would take me a very long time to get over there. I'm gonna do it. Alright, next turn. Next turn! Oh, very good. Well, technically it's even, um, but I believe I'm on the way to winning if I can force some of his cavalry into an unfavorable situation. Um, if all of my cavalry breaks before I can do anything though, I will lose. certainly had it with these guns. If I charge them, there is a small risk that I could get into a position where I would be flanked by these veteran horse. So we'll not charge them. Instead, we will shoot at them. You can see how ineffective salvo foot is at close range. It's going to hold me back a little bit. I'm just going to ignore that unit. It's too far. Don't think it's worth the effort. Uh, I would need to send two units after it to be guaranteed of taking it out. And I only have one to easily spare. We'll do it anyway. Okay, um, I might win this, but it really depends on what happens with cavalry pursuits and whether this commanded shot can hold, which I don't think it can. Um, and ironically, <laughs> this pointless fight over here is going to end up being rather important in terms of who crosses over that 60% threshold. Onward. Next turn. 50 to 50.
would have been able to catch these in the flank, but now I cannot. And we are outnumbered. It's actually a very dangerous situation. So I need to decide whether to flee or fight with my cavalry. And I think fleeing might be the answer because I'm going to need to keep the flanks of the salvo foot unit covered. I could flee into the rough. I think I would get caught here. So I think the only good option for flight is here and then turning around. In which case I could get zone of control locked by a cheaper unit from the rough. But I think I'm going to accept that risk. Still very close. Next turn. Ah, success. They could have just shook hands and called it a day, but I guess they felt like earning their pay after all. Oh. Uh, I suppose I just got that wrong, unfortunate. Okay, well, Fortunate, they'll make him into cover. Partially my mistake, I think I could have moved here, but that's all right. Oh, very lucky. This could still go either way. Oh, of course.
Now I'm not sure how the percentages work out. If we break this unit but lose these two units, that might be a 60-60 draw. There we go. So, that unit will not rally. This unit will not rally. I believe we have victory, but we will confirm it next turn. All right, and what appears to be our final turn. A very narrow win. Um, easily could have gone the other way. You know, it would have been a guaranteed draw had my opponent stayed on the side of the river with the deep stream. He came out to fight, so, you know, credit to him. We had a game because of that. And I had some nice terrain in the shape of this ridge to help me out. Um, and the patches of rough really made things a little bit more difficult on his cavalry operations. Um, I still don't think the salvo vote were really worth their point cost. Um, and I think it's notable that although I did win this game as well playing as the Swedes, it was very narrow and very close to going the other way. Um, so, Awesome4 and I pretty much always keep a pair of mirrored skirmish matches going. Um, I might let that go for a few weeks or a month while the Digital League is underway, but once those games start wrapping up, we will resume. Till next time.